Okay, so the next thing that we want to take care of is the mode of group data. So just to make sure that we are on the same page, the mode of group data Okay, so about the mode of group data, just so to just just so to make sure that we are on the same page, the mode of it, of, of of a set of data, we're not thinking about the grouped part. So so for example, suppose that you have a set of a set a set of observations, which are for example two, five, three, four, nine, for example two. Six seven two seven six two and that's that's these are basically your observations. So you have two basically two two and two over here uh, occurring four times. Two occurring four times. And for example five is occurring one time, three is occurring one time, four is occurring one time, nine one times six two times for example uh, seven for example two times and so on and so forth so you see that the observation that has happened that has occurred the highest number of times in your observ in your in all of your observations this this observation is called the mode of your that the mode of the mode of, of all the observations of all the observations or you can call it the mode of your data and of course you can use the idea that basically an observation has happened the highest number of times in a set of observations in different contexts in different ways but uh, uh, but basically our goal here is to basically find out how we can we can find that that mode for a set now this is ungrouped data this is ungrouped data so our goal here now is to to figure out how we can we can we can find that find find basically the, the mode of our data when the data is not ungrouped but grouped data Meaning that you have your data in the form of a table. You have, for example, these classes or uh, basically then the frequency related to those classes and so on and so forth. So well, let's see how we can do that. So um, the minus six. So first of all, recall from class 9, a mode is that value among the observations which occurs most often, that is the value of the observation having the maximum frequency. So you can call it the, the, the value of the observation having the maximum frequency. So further, we discussed finding the mode of ungrouped data. Uh, here we shall discuss ways of obtaining a mode of group data. It's possible that more than one value may have the same maximum frequency, and in such situations, the data is said to be multimodal. So, if you have one, if you have more than, if you have more than one mode, which is of course possible, more than basically one mode then you you can say that your data is your data is multi multimodal multimodal your data is multimodal okay multimodal of course Now, it seems that what we want to do here is that we, we will restrict ourselves to problems having a single mode because there must be some ways to determine what is the mode of your data 
if you if your data is multimodal. So it seems that for now we are not uh, talking about the kind of data that um, that uh, that have more than one mode. Okay. So now let's first recall how we found how we found the mode for ungrouped data through the following example. So let's say that you have the, the wickets taken by the by a bowler. I don't really know what is a wicket, what, what is a wicket, what is a bowler, what is a and what is cricket. I understand that it's a game, but then I don't know any details about the game. But we can kind of, I mean, we can understand the concept based on that. It, it, it's not, I mean, it's not like you need to be a cricketer to understand the concept of cricket, I suppose. I, enough I do understand, but, but let's see. So the wickets taken by a bowler in 10, I don't know, I, I, all that I understand is that the wicket is what? I don't know really. What is a wicket? So one forming part of or placed near a large gate or door and opening like a window, either of the two sets of three stumps topped by two cross pieces and set 66 feet apart at which ball is Either of the two sets of three stumps topped by two cross pieces. Well, that I don't understand. Okay, so let's see if we can understand it. And usually it's easier to work with Oxford. So the wicket is either of the two sets of the three vertical sticks called stumps. You see, this is, it's much easier to work with this dictionary than any other dick because even if they use a new, as a word that you might not know, for example, I don't really know, for example, I didn't really know the word stumps, but they have, they have actually defined everything along the way as far as, far as it was under, as far as it's possible. And they have done it in such a way that you will actually understand the word. So, uh, after this dictionary, I would recommend this dictionary. I would recommend this dictionary, the, the, the Merriam Webster dictionary. And then probably if you, if your word is a little bit more technical or you cannot find it anywhere else, then dictionary.com. And uh, that's it. I guess you don't need more than that. So it says that either of the two sets of three vertical sticks called stumps with pieces of wood called bales lying across the top. The bowler tries to hit the wicket with the ball. Okay, I, now I got it. So I suppose it's those two, ver those three vertical things below that person in, in a game of cricket. I've seen a person stands there in front of some, in front of these three vertical things. And then the, the bowler tries to hit those three things with a, with the ball. And then they probably even fall down, I suppose. So now the question is the wickets taken by a bowler in 10 cricket matches are as follows. I mean that he has hit the, the, the wicket. That, that's what it means, right? Of course, I'm sure you already understand cricket, but, uh, but I really don't. So uh, the wickets taken by a bowler in 10 cricket matches are as follows. So you have, you have basically two, six, you have two, six, four, five, zero, two, one, three, zero, two, one, three, and two, three. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten scores for ten games. Now you want to find the mode of data. So first, 
you form a frequency distribution table of the given data. So first you form a frequency distribution frequency distribution distribution table distribution table of the given data meaning that you usually write your numbers in a, in an in a in an ascending order and write your numbers for example like this so for example starting from 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 yeah you have no 7 uh, and that's it so 0 happens once the frequency of 0 is 1 the frequency of 1 is 1 the frequency of 2 is 3 the frequency of 3 is 2 twice it's it's occurred twice the frequency of 4 is 1 the frequency of 5 is 1 and the frequency of 6 is 1 so these are the number of wickets these are the number of wickets and these are the number of matches these are the number of matches and of course in short you can say that these are your observations and these are the frequencies related to those observations in the language of the statistics but of course then it's it, it it's important to understand for example what your data represents because that way you will be understand the concepts much better now you can see that clearly two is the number of wickets taken by the bowler in the maximum number of matches so the mode of this data is two the mode of this data is two three times right so in a group frequency distribution it's not possible to determine the mode by looking at the frequencies because well you put all of these numbers together in the form of those uh, classes and then all of the numbers are basically kind of aggregated together so you, you don't after once you once you put your numbers together then you don't really know what is what everything is now mixed together right so then you're you don't you don't really know the frequency of of any specific numbers but you know the frequency of a of a class basically interval and that class interval could contain basically all the numbers from 0 to 6 even all of these numbers meaning that most of the time for example your class size is 10 or 15 so of course in those cases the range of your data is way too, way way too way, way larger than 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 these few numbers here but but in any case in a grouped frequency distribution it's not possible to determine the mode by looking at the frequencies it's it's it's, it's never it's not possible really. so here we can only locate a class with the maximum frequency called the modal class so you come you basically you, you you need to be looking for a class that has the highest the maximum frequency and then you call that that class the modal class the modal class is the class having the highest frequency now the mode is a value inside the modal class and is given by this formula Well, it makes sense that I need to think about this. 
Okay, so now I wanted to think, uh, basically there is no derivation of this formula here. I do not know how they have figured it out. Let's see if, if we can if we can figure out how they have found this formula. But there is a couple of things here that I was thinking about. And one of them is that, uh, well, since your Well, since all of your observations will be classified into those class in rows, then of course, then your frequencies will be basically added together. Meaning that, for example, suppose that in the case of this data here, you have, um, Basically, suppose that your data of your class in rows go from 0 to 3 and then 3 to um, 0 to 3, or, or let's, let's take it as, for example, 1 to 3 and then 3 to 6 and so on, and 1 to, or 0 to 3 and then, and then, or 1 to 4, or basically then then, then 4 to 7 and so on and so forth then in that case what happens is that open my window then basically in that case what happens is that the the basically the the, the the individual basic the frequencies of those uh, of those uh, numbers are will be basically added together and then you don't know what's what's going on in your, with your data now what they say is that you take you take one basically among all of the classes that you have there is a class that has the highest uh, the highest uh, frequency <clears throat> that class has the highest frequency now that that class you take it as your model class you take it as your model class and then your mode will be calculated using this using this formula so then you have your L which is the lower limit of your of, of your of your model class so meaning that you, here you go from x to y for example or for example let's say that your classes basically go this way for example you have x1 to x1 to y1 for example x2 to y2 you have x3 to y3 and to y3 and so on and so forth let's say that this is your model class and there is uh, a lower limit for your low, for your model class there is a upper limit for your model class this l is the lower limit of your low, of your model class meaning x2 this number over here so you take your l and you add it to you add it to a fraction multiplied by the multiplied by the multiplied by, by multiplied by the class size so your class size, whatever your class size is, you have to multiply it by that fraction. And that fraction is f of 1 minus f of 0 over 2 times f of 1 minus f of 0 minus f of 2. And f of 1 is basically your the frequency of the model class. f of 0 is the is the frequency of the class preceding the model class meaning that meaning that the frequency over here is f of 0 the frequency over here is f of 1 not this one f of 1 and then and then divided by 2 times f of 1 minus f of 0 minus f of 2 and f of 2 is the frequency of the class succeeding the model class now i don't know how they have done this but the problem is that
Now, my, I mean, the only question that I have is that Okay, so I'll, I'll try to ask my question in a different way. So let's let's get into a couple of problems and then I'll try to formulate the question. Okay. Now, um, as an example, we have a survey conducted on 20 households in, in, a, in a locality where a group of students resulted in the following frequency table for the number of families family members in a household so the survey conducted on 20 households. also the family size for example so this this is suppose that this is the family size and this is the number of families so the family size if it goes from one to three people probably and the number of families were seven if it was three to five people then it is then the number of families were eight five to seven people the number of families were two seven to nine people the number of families were two and nine to eleven nine to eleven people the number of families were one okay and so based on what we said this is supposed to be our um, our model class this is supposed to be our model class because it's the highest frequency among all the other classes and uh, And so what that means is that um, now my question here is basically this is the family size meaning that here we're dealing with basically f uh, um, uh, one two either you have one person or two people in this family in all of these families over here we have either three or four people in these families right or you had and then you had five or six people in these families and so on and so forth now suppose that for example suppose that the mode of my data suppose that the mode of my data was actually for example four which 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 falls into this category right suppose that the mode of my data was four and it was basically for example some number it, it, it would be some number whose frequency is the highest frequency among all of the all of the other observations basically in in all of the observations that you have this number would have let's call this this mode let's call it m this would have some frequency f of m which is the highest frequency among all the frequencies related to all the observations that you might have not all the classes but all the observations then what that means is that then what that means is that then um, any other observation that you might have any other observation that you might have would have a would have a frequency at least one lower than f of m right so that then then you would have basically f of m then then any other then any other basically observation would have a would have a frequency which is at most f of m minus one which is which would be at most f of m minus one now suppose that um, suppose that basically for example i have two numbers over here or two observations over here and one of them is i am assuming that is the is is my mode 
So the, uh, the, the frequency over there is f of m. So if the frequency of that number 4, for example, here is, and 5, you know, that is not is not a part of this class, 5 would, would fit into this, this class over here. So then the, the frequency related to that number 4 would be f of m. And the frequency of the other number 3 is at most f of m minus 1. So if I add these two frequencies together, I would get f of m minus 1. And then this gives me basically 2 times f of m, 2 times the, this frequency. This frequency here would be 2 times f of m minus 1. Now, any other class that I have over here, at most would have a frequency of f of m minus 1, as, as we argued here. So then f of m minus 1, and then you, ha you would have basically two such numbers here. So f of m, f of m minus 1 times 2, because you have to add the two frequencies together, you would get 2 times f of m minus 2. Right? So then in any case, f of m, 2 times f of m minus 1 is always, 2 times f of m minus 1 is always greater than 2 times f of m minus 2. And therefore, that way you can make sure that your model class does indeed contain your mode, meaning that the class having the highest frequency will always contain your mode. And that's basically how you, how you, um, I mean, I was trying to think about this. I was, um, I was kind of under the, under the impression that maybe somehow you could end up with a class that doesn't, that doesn't contain your, or include your mode, but still has the, has the highest or one of, or basically has the highest frequency among all of your classes, but it seems that it's, Actually, not possible. <coughs> okay, so that is that. Now, so I I have this data over here, or I have basically this table over here, and so uh, basically we we said that if a, a survey conducted on twenty households, this is fifteen plus five is equal to twenty, all of these frequencies. And 20 households in a locality by a group of students resulted in the following frequency table for the number of families in a household. The number of families in a household. The number of families in a household, that doesn't make any sense, but you do get the idea. Meaning that, for example, if the, if the family size was one to three, I suppose, that corresponded to, in that locality, that corresponded to seven families. Meaning that there were seven families such that their size was either two, one person, or two people. There were eight families such that their, their size was either three people or four people, and so on and so forth. So now you want to find the mode of this data. Okay, so now let's use the formula to solve this problem. So the formula was, uh, the, I don't remember the formula. So the mode is equal to, is equal to L plus uh, F of uh, one, F of one minus F of zero. 2 times f of 1 minus f of 0 minus f of 2 f of 2 over uh, times basically h, the class size. So here your mode becomes, of course, this these are all approximation, you know, because your data goes into all of these tables and then you treat your data in different ways. So then, of course, the mode is, I mean, all of the all of the three measures that you that you calculate this way using all of these formulas um, 
I mean, as soon as you group your data, then of course your your single or or basically distinct or let's say your observation. I mean, all of your observations are grouped into certain groups. And once that happens, then you don't have really access to your observations and then you have to use such formulas in order to have some approximation to that value you're looking for. For example, you want to find your mode or your mean or your median. Um, for example, in the previous case, you saw that basically the 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 actual value of the mean was was something like 59.3 or 7 or something but then the mean that we got with the with the three formulas were actually all 62 so these are these are always approximations because um, for the simple reason that basically your data has been grouped into certain groups and then you don't have access to uh, each and every one of your observations anymore so so then in this case for example your mode is equal to l which is the lower uh, the lower uh, limit of your of your model class which is 3 in this case so 3 plus f1 minus f of 0 so f of um, f of 1 is the frequency of the model class so f of 1 is the frequency of the model class which is 8 then you have f of 0 which is the frequency of the class preceding the model class that's the frequency of the class preceding the model class which is basically this uh, frequency here 7 and then 2 times f of 1 which is 2 times 8 2 times 8 minus f of 0 which is uh, 7 minus f of 2 which is this frequency meaning that the frequency of the class following the the, the model class so that's a 2 so that's equal to basically 3 plus 8 minus 7 is equal to 1 that's 16 minus 9 16 minus 9 which is the same thing as 3 plus 16 minus 9 is equal to um, is equal to uh, 7 so that's 1 7 so that's the same thing as I don't know how they have calculated this it's supposed to be two sevenths. Oh, there is a there is a h over here as well. There is some h over here as well. So you have to multiply your h by 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 this by this by the numerator. Now the h is three minus one, for example, is equal to two, or five minus three is equal to two. So times two, and then you have you will get basically uh, one times two here. So you have three plus two sevenths. 3 plus 2 sevenths and that is equal to that is equal to 7 here that's 21 plus 2 which is equal to 23 sevenths and 23 sevenths is the same thing as uh, is the same thing as uh, 3.29 approximately 3.3.286 Three point three point two eight six. That's the value of your of your mold, which of course it. Um, I mean, based on the fact that it we took this as our model class, it makes sense. It has to be somewhere between three and five. So it's three point two eight six, right? And. Um, And let's do another example here. Let's do another one of these examples. It says that the marks distribution of 30 students in a mathematics examination are given in table 
uh, 14.3 of example 1. Find the mode of this data. Also compare and interpret the mode and the mean. Okay, so this is a good example. So table 14.3 is table 14.3 is 14.3 is must be somewhere over here. Okay, so we have um, we have basically this let me draw the table over here. So we have basically the class intervals here. We have the class intervals here. And then we have the number of students and the number of students. So you can take this as your, of course, class interval is the number of students you can take as f of i. And so you have basically all of these class intervals like 10 to 25, 25 to 40, and 40 to 55, 55 to 70. So that's 15, 7, 70 to 70 to 85 and 85 to 85 to 100. And then the number of students or f of i is 2, 3, 2, 3, 7, 6, 6, 6, 7, 6, 6 and 6. Okay, so then let's see how we can calculate the mode here. So the data has already been grouped, so I don't have access to the actual, to the actual observations. The data has been grouped into these groups, or these classes, basically. Now what I can do is that, of course, I need to have the formula here and so let me write down or just make a screenshot of this formula here. How do I do that? Mm, okay. Actually, I didn't want to do this. Okay, so uh, the formula that I have is basically, um, so I, I need my, basically the formula is mode is equal to, is equal to A or L plus F of 1 minus F of 0, F of 1 minus F of 0 over 2 times F of 1 minus F of 0 minus F of uh, 2 times times h right so now what i need is the lower limit of the model class the model class must be this one over here because this has the highest frequency among all of the classes that we have here so this is my model class and the lower limit of that model class is 40 so that i already know and f of 0 f of 1 f of 2 and all of these i already know one of them is 3, 7, and 6, these three frequencies. And uh, now it has nothing to do with x, I, x of i or anything like that, so I don't have to calculate x of i here, and the, and the class size is already, in, I know that h is equal to 15, because the difference between the lower limit and the upper limit is 15. So... So then I can write the mode is equal to the mode is equal to L which is equal to 40 plus f of 1 minus of now f of 1 is the is the frequency of the model class which is 7 
f of 0 is the frequency of the class that comes before that so that's 3 and again over here you write 2 times 7 minus 3 minus the f of 2 which is the frequency of this class after the model class which is 6 and you multiply that by h which is 15. Now this is equal to 40 plus basically 7 minus it is equal to 4 4 times 15 is equal to 60 and then here I have 14 and this is negative 9 14 minus 9 is equal to uh, 5 so 60 to 5 is equal to 12 so that's 60 to 5 which is equal to 12 so 40 plus 12 is equal to 55 I'm sorry 52 52 so it goes basically 52 is some number between 40 and 55 right now let me see if I can Model group data. Okay, 52. Now the that is the mode of the group data. So your mode is let me write it somewhere else. So your mode is equal to mode is equal to 52, right? Now I need to um, I need to basically calculate the mean of this data as well, right? So to calculate the mean of this data, I can use the, either the direct method. I can use either the direct method or the mean assumed mean method. Or the basically the step deviation the step deviation the step deviation method so let's, let's see if the direct method is possible in this case otherwise we will use some 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 other method some of these two one of these two methods so the direct method was basically we said that x bar is equal to uh, sigma sigma f of i times x of i over sigma over sigma f of i so i have my f of i so i can calculate sigma f of i here there is no problem with that but i need sigma f of i x of i so i need to calculate x of i so x of i over here i can for that i need the class marks meaning the average of the lower limit and upper limit of these classes so 10 plus 25 is equal to 35 35 divided by 2 is equal to 17.5 17.5 and 25 plus 4 is equal to 65 that's 32.5 32.5 then you have 40 plus 5 is 95 95 divided by 2 is equal to 47.5 47.5 so you can see that for example the difference between these two must be your class size it's meaning that 17.5 plus 15 must be equal to uh, 12 132.5 yes so so then basically you can you can write here 47.5 plus 15 is equal to 15 12 1 and 62.5 here you have 62.5 plus 15 is 70 77.5 77.5 and 77.5 plus 15 is equal to 12 1 92.5 I'm not sure if these are correct. Let's calculate that. This is the last one. That's 185. Six. Uh, 
185, that's 50, 40, and 2.5, so that's 92 point, that's correct. Now, what I need to do now is multiply F of I and X of I. So, not that, but it would be easier to use the assumed mean method. Meaning that I could write X of bar is equal to A plus, uh, A plus, I don't remember the formula, A plus sigma, sigma F of I, d of i over sigma f of i something like that <coughs> so i need to find d of i so in my x of i's i take for example this number as the assumed mean and then over here i write d of i and i and i calculate and i define d of i as as x of i minus a i take this as a for example take this number as the assumed mean or a right I take this as a and a is equal to this and so I write this as x of i minus a <coughs> now x of i minus a is equal to, for example, 17.5 minus 62.5. Now you see that the difference between these two numbers is 15, 15, 15. So that's difference between these two numbers is 45. 45. So if the difference between these two numbers is 45, if I Let's do the calculation. 62.5 minus 17.5. 0 and 5. 45. That's a 45. And then 32.5 minus 62.5 is that that would be 0 and 0. That, that negative, that's negative 45. That's negative 30. 47.5 and 62.5 that that must be negative 15 that is 0 and that is uh, well, 62.5 70 77.5 62.5 would be 1 and 5 that's a 15 if I'm not mistaken and 92.5 minus 62.5 is 30 right and still the numbers are kind of not kind of large so what I'm going to do well we can actually do that so f of i times d of i f of i times d of i is equal to now this is f of i this is d of i so 2 times negative 45 is negative 40 3 times negative 30 is negative 90 7 times 15 is equal to negative um, that's 70 and 305 and this is a 0 this is a 6 times 15 is equal to 60 and 90 and again another 90 then you have 180 and over here you have negative 180 negative 100 negative 180 plus negative 105 is 105 so you would get 5, 8, 285, so 285 and the negative sign here, you would get 5, 0, and 1, negative 105. So sigma, <coughs> sigma f of i d of i is equal to negative 105. And just to make sure that I'm not wrong here, let me do the... So let's say negative 90 minus 90 minus 105 plus 90 plus 90 is equal to negative 105, right? And then you have basically sigma f of i, which is equal to 5 plus 7 is equal to 12. 12 and 12 plus 18 is equal to 
basically uh, 20 and 30. So now your x bar is going to be equal to a, which is your assumed in 62.5 plus sigma f of i d of i, which is negative 105 divided by sigma f of i, which is equal to 30. And that is going to give you that is going to give you erase these as well. That is going to give you 105 divided by 30 is equal to 105 divided by 30 is going to give you basically 3, 3 times 30 is equal to 90. 90. And so you will get a 15 there and zero and um, five times 30 is equal to 150. So that's 3.5. That's 3.5. 105 divided by 30. 3.5. So you have 60. 2.5 minus 3.5 so 62.5 minus 3.5 is equal to 0 and then you have 12 minus 10 is equal to 9 and 59 that's equal to 59 let's see if, if the answer is correct so the mode is the mean mark is 62 Must have made some mistake over here. So let me do some calculations quickly here. So 10 plus 25 is equal to and that divided by 2 equal to 17.5. 17.5 plus 15, 32.5, 32.5 plus 15 is equal to 47.5, 47.5 plus 15 is equal to 62.5, 62.5 plus 15 is equal to 77.5, and 77.5 plus 15 is equal to 92.5, and then 17, 0.5 minus 62.5 is equal to negative 45 and then negative 30 negative 15 15 30 okay so f of i times d of i is equal to negative 90 negative 90 7 times 15 is equal to 105 6 times 15 is equal to 90. 6 times, oh, I made a mistake here. 6 times 30 is equal to 180. That is equal to 180. So then if you write 180 plus 90 minus 105 minus 90 minus 90, equal to negative 15 equal to negative negative 15 so then you have 62.5 plus sigma f of i d of i is equal to negative 15 negative 15 over sigma f of i which is equal to 12 plus 18 is equal to 30 so there you have uh, so there you have, uh, but basically that is negative one half. So that that gives you sixty two. So your your mode your mean is equal to sixty two. So your mode is equal to 
your mod is equal to 52, your mean is equal to is equal to 62, right? Now, what's important here is to make to be able to make sense of the data that you have, right? So we have we had this data, we calculated the mean, the mode, and now you need to be able to uh, make sense of the data that you have. And the way that you can do it, so now basically the mode is equal to 52. That means that the maximum number of students, the maximum number of students obtained 52 marks, or their marks were basically 52, the maximum number of students. And then about the mean, you can say that while on average, on average, a student obtained 62 marks. So that's basically, for example, the meaning of mode and mean in this context. Meaning that the, when, when your mode is basically 52, we said that basically mode is the, is the, is the measure of central tendency that, uh, in the case of which the, basically that, that observation has the highest frequency. So if you have the highest frequency, what that means is that that, that observation has happened was, or has occurred the highest number of times, which means that basically the, basically the most number of students or the maximum number of students obtained 52 as the mark on that, on that examination. And then on average, you can say that on average, a student got a mark of basically mark of 62. So that's basically that. Now, in this example, there is also some remarks. And it says that in this example, basically the mode is less than the mean. So you see that the mode is 52, the mean is 62. But for some other problems, it may be equal or it may, or, 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 or more than the mean also. And it depends upon the demand of the situation, whether we are interested in finding the average marks obtained by the students or the average of the marks obtained by most of the students. In the first situation, the mean is required, and in the second, the mode is required. So, this is also something important. You, you, it says that it depends upon the demand of the situation whether we are interested in finding the average marks obtained by the by the students. Average marks obtained obtained by the by the students or whether you want to you want to average of the marks obtained by most of the students average of the marks average of the marks obtained by obtained by most of the students So of course in this in this case over here, average marks obtained by the students in this case you just simply calculate your x bar, which is your mean basically. In this case over here, average of the marks obtained by most of the students, that would be for example your mode basically. So in the first situation the mean is required, and in the second the mode is required. Okay, so uh, I think we don't really need to do much here anymore. And then in the next video, we will talk about the median of group data. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.